First off, what is the mainstream definition of a star fort? Here's the definition from Wikipedia. A bastion fort or star fort or trace italienne, a phrase derived from a non-standard French literally meaning Italian outline, is a fortification in a style that evolved during the early modern period of gunpowder when the cannon became dominant on the battlefield. It was first seen in the mid-15th century in Italy. The design of the fort is normally a polygon with bastions at corners of the walls. These outcroppings eliminated protected blind spots called dead zones and allowed fire along the curtain from positions protected from direct fire. Many bastion forts also feature cavaliers which are raised secondary structures based entirely inside the primary structure. Their predecessors, medieval fortresses, were usually placed on high hills. These fortifications proved quite difficult to overcome and accordingly fortresses occupied a key position in warfare. We in the alternative history community classify these medieval forts as star forts as well. Due to the shape and star points in the outer fortifications, examples being the city of London, Copenhagen, or Frankfurt. But the questions that arise to cause for further theorizing and researching are how did medieval people build such intricate structures that are often aligned with the rotation of the heavenly bodies and build with massive canal systems and even terraform entire mountains? And why would the early settlers in America build these same structures as soon as they reached America? Some of these star forts are made up of millions of bricks and we're supposed to believe they were built by the first people who got to America. Many star forts are also discovered in remote regions of Europe, America, and even places like India that are completely covered in dirt and vegetation. Many times they are also completely undocumented in logs and history. And yet the star shape is still visible in these unknown ruins. Some theorists suggest that the star forts were part of a larger network of advanced civilizations that existed around the world. This could explain the similarities in design and construction techniques found in forts across different continents. These star forts are also shown to incorporate advanced technology like water pumping systems, resonant frequency technology, symmetry, and intricate tunnel systems below them. One of the key features of star forts is their alignment with the stars and planets. Some researchers say this could be evidence of an advanced knowledge of astronomy and possibly connecting with extraterrestrial intelligence. Some star forts are thought to incorporate advanced acoustical principles with the walls designed to reflect sound waves in a way that amplifies them. This technology could have been used as communication or as a form of defense against attackers. One might liken this to the way the Israelites destroyed the walls of Jericho in the Bible. Another key point to mention is that the many star forts were built during the same time period as the Knights Templar, who were known for their advanced knowledge of engineering and architecture. Some theories suggest the Templars may have been involved in the building of these star forts. And I have a video on a possible Templar voyage to America before Columbus that might relate to the building of some of these star forts in America. I'll put that in the cards in the description if you want to check that out. All of these unexplained and seemingly impossible phenomenon has led many to suspect there's been a cover-up in our history, and these were built by a much earlier civilization that has disappeared from our narrative. Which brings me to our first theory about star forts. The Atlantean Origin Theory. Not a lot of people talk about this idea, but I really think it's possible that star fort technology was passed down through the remnants of the Atlantean civilization. Atlantis was said to be a massive earthwork structure with huge canals and moat systems that surrounded the entire island. If Atlantis was a star fort, it would have been the largest ever, larger than any man-made island we have. But it's the concentric circles of Atlantis that makes it definitive in my mind that it was built as a star fort and incorporated all of these same technologies we find in star forts today, which we will get into later. Here's an excerpt from Plato's Critias. Atlantis was founded by the god Poseidon and was ruled by his descendants, the Atlanteans. In this island of Atlantis, there was a great and wonderful empire, which had rule over the island and several others, and over the parts of the continent. The city of Atlantis was designed in concentric circles, with the palace of the king at the center. It was said to be filled with magnificent buildings and temples, and was surrounded by an extensive system of canals and harbors. The whole country was said by him to be very lofty and precipitous on the side of the sea, but the country immediately about and surrounding the city was a level plain, itself surrounded by mountains which descended towards the sea. And beginning from the sea, they bored a canal of 300 feet in width and 100 feet in depth and 50 stadia in length, which they carried through the outermost zone. 
making a passage from sea up to this, which became a harbor, and leaving an opening sufficient to enable the largest vessels to find ingress. In the interior of the temple, the roof was ivory, curiously wrought everywhere with gold and silver and orichalcum, and all the other parts, the walls and the pillars and the floor, they coated with orichalcum. And one grievous day and night befell them, when the whole body of your warriors was swallowed up by the earth, and the island of Atlantis in like manner was swallowed up by the sea and vanished. This sounds like a star fort to me. Unfortunately, this is the only known historical description of Atlantis, so it's up to you to decide if it was just coincidentally similar to a star fort or the origin of this technology. Many cultures from around the world claim to have gained their knowledge of civilization building and even architecture from a lost, advanced civilization. These were the bringers of civilization, and the stories say after a great cataclysm, they spread their knowledge to different places around the world. Some of them being the Fertile Crescent, India and Pakistan, Mesoamerica and South America, and Far East Asia. And many of these places constructed things like giant fortresses, pyramids, and giant earthworks often similar to star forts. Some of the star fort theorists say that many of these early civilizations could have built the star forts we see there today or possibly they could have been there even longer, or contained ruins dating back to such a time. Many ancient structures are built on top of older ones. This is a common practice that can often confuse dating methods and distort history. If Atlantis was the first star fort, it would explain the origins of the advanced technology and the terraforming that star forts incorporate, and it suggests there may have been deliberate effort to hide the true origins of star forts, possibly to keep the knowledge of an advanced civilization hidden from the masses. But this is just the beginning of the mystery. If Atlantis was the first star fort, it only raises more questions for us to answer. The idea that Atlantis may have been a star fort is a fascinating theory that raises many questions about our past and the potential for lost civilizations. By exploring the evidence and asking critical questions, we can continue to unravel the mysteries of the past and gain a deeper understanding of our world today. This next theory revolves around the possible functions of these star forts, and an interesting history told me by a woman from the Lakota Sioux tribe in my area, about a sacred site where a star fort now sits today. There are a few anomalies across most, if not all, star forts that make very little sense given the mainstream narrative that I want to look deeper into. First is the relationship between star forts and water. Many of these star forts are built with intricate water pumping systems, and the location of these forts along waterways and coastlines is of interest. We're told that star forts were put there for their strategic purposes, but many of them have never seen battle or are in remote regions away from relevance altogether. And what about the cave systems underneath? Many of which are undocumented and are so big you can even drive through them. And many are even said to go underneath waterways like rivers and bays. And almost all of these star forts have these passages underneath. There are also these so-called plugs that we often find in these star forts that are an anomaly all on their own. There's such a weird construction technique that we find in almost all star forts in the US and many others as well. But why? Why such specific architecture? What could the purpose have been? Well, some say that these structures were actually built as irrigation hubs. The theory has two parts. First off, these star forts are said to have been built as flood walls to block a cataclysmic onset of flooding across the world, or even just the rising of sea levels after the last cooling period. Many of these forts were built with such intricacy and ingenious irrigation techniques that they could accommodate an entire city inside of them, while the floods raged on outside the city walls. It may be no coincidence that most of these structures are built on the highest hills in their regions. These forts also could have been used as a part of a project to drain waters from the land. They could divert entire river systems and change the course of water flows, effectively draining the waters into the oceans in the process, or at least to the lowest points in the land. This whole process reminds me of the legend of the Chinese flood myth of Yu. This quote is from Emperor Yao, a so-called mythological emperor from early Chinese history. He wrote about the flood saying, Like endless boiling water, the flood is pouring forth destruction. Boundless and overwhelming, it overtops hills and mountains. Rising and ever rising, it threatens the very heavens. How people must be groaning and suffering. The story goes that the floodwaters covered all the valleys and only left the very tops of the tallest mountains above water. Some say this is why we find the oldest Chinese ruins on the very tops of mountains, and why sacred temples are built on the highest peaks. The story goes on to speak of a hero named Yu who the emperor appointed to combat the floodwaters. Yu had a mysterious unexplained technology of a magically expanding soil that they would use in the construction of the flood walls and dike systems. 
When this failed, they resorted to a drainage system and terraformed the land, creating huge channels. It is written in ancient Chinese histories that Yu said this about the floods. The inundating waters seemed to assail the heavens, and in their extent embraced the hills and overtopped the great mounds, so that the people were bewildered and overwhelmed. I opened passages for the streams throughout the nine provinces and conducted them to the seas. I deepened the channels and conducted them to the streams, he said. Our theory also takes notice of the intricate tunnel systems beneath most star forts. Some say that in many areas the floods got so bad they eventually submerged the star forts as well. And we even see evidence of this today in the form of buried star forts with little explanation around it. And this forced the people living in these star forts to go underground into these cave systems that we know are there today, in most if not all star forts. And this is not even an uncommon practice. Neuer's caves in France, Derinkuyu caves and Kai Makli caves in Turkey, there's also stories of many tribes from across North and South America of emerging from caves after a worldwide cataclysm. And we find these cave systems all over like Mammoth Cave System in Kentucky, the longest cave system in the world, much of which is completely unexplored. The Cheyenne Caves, the Wind Caves in North Dakota. There are also caves connecting the ancient city of Cusco to other areas going underneath the Andes Mountains in South America, and countless other examples. So it's not that far off to suspect an ancient culture survived a major cataclysm in caves underneath some of these star forts. Some take this notion a step further and say these star forts are built above entrances to inner regions of Earth. They cite these huge cave systems underneath as evidence, and some say there are secret entrances that may now have been covered up or concreted over. Again, native stories are also what backs this theory up, and we can point to many Native American tribes that believe they originated from a cave system or an inner Earth. Quick examples being the tribes in the Southwest like the Hopi, Zuni, and Navajo, also the Mesoamerican tribes, and I'm sure many others as well. I know in my region of the country, the native people have a similar story. I find that when studying Native American creation stories, they fall into two categories. The first is inner earth or subterranean world origins, and the second is originating from a huge flood by surviving on a vessel or even a piece of driftwood, like in the Ojibwe origin story. Some Lakota tribes tell a story of their creation at a site called Bedote, meaning where two waters come together. It is the spot between Minneapolis and St. Paul where the Minnesota River meets the Mississippi. There are also many small mounds near this area, and the Lakota tell of this being the site of their creation. They also believe that this exact spot where the rivers meet is the exact center point of Earth. And sure enough, the only star fort in the state is sitting right here. And there are caves all throughout this area as well. This to me is no coincidence. Like the theories say, either they built this star fort here on top of this sacred focal point on Earth for a reason, or possibly some version of it was always here. I've checked it out before and there's an entire layer of stone foundation that appears much older than the actual fort that they claim is a natural formation. Star fort or no star fort, this site is extremely interesting and it is one of many just like it with similar stories. There's something about these star forts that they're built along ley lines or on top of much older sacred sites. I've always wondered if any star forts lay under the ocean. They're not supposed to in the timeline, but if they did it would prove a lot. It seems they were built strategically to avoid flooding, or like we said before, perhaps to be the solution to it. Take a look at this fort in the Florida Keys, Fort Jefferson. It still stands this peculiar spot at the tip of Florida on a sandbar half in the ocean. Even after every massive hurricane, it still stands, despite being in a terrible location. Why would they have built this here? What purpose does it serve? There's another star fort in Pensacola, Florida, the site of the first settlement in the United States dating back to 1672. The very first site they say they built a star fort. This area is also rumored by locals to have tunnels all across the city even going underneath the bay and connecting to this star fort. So many weird coincidences, it just starts to unravel everything we know. Of course we should take a look at the sites in Europe too in relation to this theory. Most European star forts encompass entire cities. They also have very advanced systems of irrigation and waterways. I'm going to get more in detail into some of these technologies in part 3, but I just wanted to touch on it because these systems of terraforming and changing entire landscapes to move water could have easily been done to drain the land of water. Look at the Netherlands for instance. This country is famous for having pumped the water from their lands and used a system of dikes and windmill pumps to create more fertile farmland and areas to live. And this country might have the most star forts out of any. But what gave them the need to do this? The only reason to develop such advanced technologies out of necessity during times of massive flooding. Why build cities in such a way? 
Walls and moats can be built without such intricate shapes and designs. No, they did this for a reason other than war tactics. They tell us the Starfort shape was a response to the invention of gunpowder, but many of these European ones were built before guns were common. This technology was way beyond what they tell us the people of the time period could do. So there has to be another explanation. In fact, many Starfort cities in Europe don't even have walls, they just have star-shaped mounds around the city. This in no way could stop an invading army, but could be very useful in keeping several meters of water out. Another example of a city built using advanced irrigation and waterworks is Venice, Italy. Although this city wasn't exactly built to take on flooding, it's a good example of how man has developed intricate technologies to live in flooded areas. The people of Venice created wood waterways, and due to the composition of the water, the wood fossilized and turned to stone, creating the long-standing structures we see there today. Another example of this is the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan, and how they built rafts of vegetation whose roots eventually lodged themselves into the lake bed, creating livable land in the middle of a lake, and the Mayans used this technique as well. These starforts could possibly be another version of these types of cities. So what do you think? Could starforts have been built as some sort of flood walls or drainage system after a great flood? And what do they have to do with these stories of inner earth, or people emerging from cave systems? And why were they built in such sacred areas and along ley lines? This next theory about star forts is about the technology they incorporated. The people who built these star forts used techniques for water pumping and terraforming, and they had knowledge of celestial alignments as well as sacred geometry and resonant frequencies. And on top of that, they could manifest these technologies into incredibly precise structures like star forts and also cathedrals and earlier Greco-Roman architecture. The builders of these star forts also had knowledge of ley lines and earth energies and was cultivating some kind of energy either actual electricity as some speculate, or spiritual energy like chi or prana as referred to in eastern traditions. Whatever was going on with these star forts, we can see they were using technology that should not have been known, and are said to not have been created until later inventors like Tesla and Da Vinci came along. But we know ancient people were more advanced than given credit for by mainstream historians. Many ancient peoples understood stars and their alignments just as well as we do today. Cultures like the Mesoamericans, the ancient Egyptians, the Chinese, Indians, and Stone Age Europeans all understood the alignments and rotations in the heavens, and could predict things like eclipses and natural disasters. They would also build their structures in alignment with the equinox and the cardinal directions. The ancient structures also incorporated some of the same technologies we see in cathedrals and star forts today, such as frequency technology. Examples being the Mayan and Aztec pyramids reflecting sound as terrifying noises back at you or the theory that the pyramids are some kind of Tesla coil technology. These theories basically conclude that pyramids were a source of free energy for the ancient people, and later cathedrals used this technology. They point to the antenna-like golden top that sits atop cathedrals and pyramids, as well as the many nodes made of substances that can hold a charge and conduct electricity. Many even speculate that the structures themselves could have held a charge due to their high composition of quartz, like we find in the majority of these pyramids in ancient temples. The shape and inner workings of, for example, the Great Pyramids has also been theorized to be some kind of generator or battery technology, possibly cultivating energy from Earth itself. Archaeologists have even found chambers in the pyramid with zinc and copper residue, further advancing this theory. Some have also said the layouts of these sites, like Teotihuacan for example, is very similar to a circuit board, and they have found large amounts of mica on site here, which is used in the insulation of electronics today. And this is not the only site we found this. Mica has also been found at the many mound sites across America, also at Mohenjo-Daro in Pakistan, in Petra, Jordan, and many Inca sites as well. So, because of these similarities in technology, some speculate that star forts were also built by an advanced and possibly ancient civilization. This technology could have been passed down and slowly regressed into the smaller and misshapen star forts that come in at a later time period. The earliest star forts could have possibly been built in perfect alignment and in perfect symmetry and as time progressed, additions had to be made, or cataclysms could have erased memories of earlier civilizations and caused technologies to be forgotten. We see this strange regression of technology all over the world, where the oldest sites are the biggest and most advanced, and as time goes on, technologies are forgotten. This points to a lost advanced people existing in our past. Tesla himself was inspired by ancient texts, and it is said that he was a scholar of the Vedas and Upanishad texts 
which describe these advanced technologies in detail, like super weapons and flying machines that date back to a time of forgotten history when gods lived with humans, as do all the other ancient religions and cultures. But what technologies exactly did Star Force incorporate in their design? There are a few obvious ones like the massive moving of Earth to build channels and dikes in the creation of the forts, as well as their placement on waterways or protruding out into the ocean in some cases. They had to move huge amounts of Earth to create these, and even form new waterways and canals. And they did it all in perfect geometric shapes. In the Sumerian text, the Anunnaki god Inki is responsible for creating the rivers, and it says he dug giant canals to bring water and irrigate the cities as well. Star forts were a form of terraforming and changed entire water systems, bringing water to every part of the city and creating waterways for passage. But the real ingenious secrets lay in the shape of the structure. The star pattern bastions are impressive enough on their own, but there are many that say they had other motives for building in this fashion, and incorporated designs that allowed for the pumping of water and even the purification of it. These star fort shapes also relate to sacred geometry and frequency technology that must have been used to come up with these intricate designs and allowed them to do certain things thought to be impossible at that time. These star designs are detailed and precise. They remind me of things created by AI using a 3D printer. AI has given us things like better designed wind turbines and can create more efficient technologies like engines using advanced knowledge of geometry. This shows how intricate designs and patterns can be used to create futuristic technologies. These designs can move air and water in such a way that it seems to defy the laws of physics and can make things extremely energy efficient. And I think Star Force could have been designed this way to change the earth they were on and pump the water. They could have acted in a similar way to a Tesla valve, allowing the water to flow in one direction and not the other, creating a moving channel of water that doesn't need a push from gravity to flow. The Tesla valve works by using a series of interconnected channels or chambers to create a pressure drop in one direction. When fluid flows through the channel in one direction, the pressure drop causes a series of vortices to form, which creates resistance to flow in the opposite direction. This resistance prevents backflow and ensures that the fluid can only flow in one direction through the valve. I wonder if any of these star fort patterns achieve a similar effect to the Tesla valve. If this is the case, then these star forts would have had the ability to control the flow of rivers and move water around the land unlike anything ever done before. Another example of a technology Star Force could have incorporated is the Da Vinci Miter Lock System. The Da Vinci Miter Lock is a double chamber lock system that uses miter gates, which are hinged gates that close to block water flow. The miter gate have a V-shaped cross section and meet at a 45 degree angle similar to the way a picture frame miters at the corners. When the miter gates close, their angled surface form a watertight seal that prevents water from flowing between the two chambers. The Da Vinci Canal Miter Lock was designed to address the issue of water levels in canals which can vary due to changes in river flow or tides. The lock allows boats to pass through the canals by raising or lowering them from one water level to another. By controlling the flow of water between the two chambers using the miter gates, the lock ensures that the water level on each side of the lock remains constant. Star forts are designed in such a way that hinged gates would be a simple addition to the node points along the star shape. There are many methods of machines used in historical times to pump water uphill as well and things like these could have been incorporated in at least the construction of these buildings. Windmills were also used by the Dutch to pump water and change landscapes, and like we covered in the last video, the Netherlands has the most star fort cities out of any country. This area also has a history of changes in water levels. The entire English Channel was said to be dry land until around 10,000 years ago. But how did the people who built star forts know how to do these things? The oldest star forts are said to be built in the medieval period, and many of the theories around Star Force suggest they could originate from a much older time. But how do these people have knowledge about things that were only later discovered by great minds like Tesla and Da Vinci? Well, the Star Force shape has something to do with cymatics or sacred geometry. We find this type of geometry in art from ancient cultures all across the world, and we can see these shapes incorporated into the architecture as well. We also find these shapes everywhere in nature from things as small as a cell to things as large as galaxies. Our entire world is built using these types of intricate geometric shapes that display the golden ratio and perfect symmetry. You can see them in plants, in gems and minerals, in the way clouds form, in the ripples on a body of water. Everything in nature adheres to these designs, so it only makes sense that to be in perfect harmony with nature one must build in this fashion. Many ancient cities pride themselves on being built in accordance with nature and keeping with the natural frequencies of the land. 
The Earth has a resonant frequency, and each region of the Earth emanates its own specific variation of this vibration. Nikola Tesla knew this, and his Wardenclyffe Tower was said to tune into this exact frequency and provide free energy to the surrounding people. Tuning to this resonant frequency is said to have more applications than just wireless energy. It's also said to be able to heal the body and maybe why certain spots on Earth are thought to have sacred healing powers. We know that water can hold vibration and water is a large part of many of these healing sites. Maybe there was something about the shapes of Star Force that tapped into this frequency and purified the water to make it safe for drinking, even giving it healing properties. Water molecules can be influenced by frequencies and electromagnetic energy, so it's entirely possible to clean water with the right frequencies. If this is the case, then these buildings were truly built in perfect harmony with nature, providing people with modern amenities and possibly even keeping them from disease. Many have pointed out how weird it is that many of these medieval cities were built without sewage systems. Maybe they would just dump their waste into the Star 4 water channels, and the pumping system would not only wash the waste away, but would actually instantly purify the water and make it safe for drinking, using the frequencies of the earth and the architecture itself. You may think this is a little far-fetched, but there are other ancient sites that incorporate sound technology into their construction. One being Chichen Itza, and other Mesoamerican pyramids. How they reflect a terrifying chirping sound back at you when you clap in front of them. The pyramids at Giza are also said to amplify certain frequencies and sound waves. Stonehenge was also said to have acoustic properties, and many others as well. There's also the story in the Bible of the Israelites taking down the walls of Jericho, using nothing but sound waves from their horns and marching. God told them specifically when and how long to march around the city, and some theorize that there was something about the way the Israelites marched and the frequencies at which they blew their horns that caused the great walls of Jericho to crumble. These original walls have been lost history, the ones we see today in Israel were a later construction, so maybe these walls were a star fort themselves, or maybe star fort technology was created as a way to combat the sound frequency warfare. I have a video that delves into this a little bit about King Solomon and how the temple, as well as the Jerusalem city walls, look Tartarian in origin. It's titled Solomon, the first king of Tartaria. I'll link that below. No matter which way you slice it, the people that built star forts had to have knowledge of cymatics and sound frequencies, just to simply design these types of shapes. Some of these star forts are so intricate, it couldn't have been a coincidence that they were built to match the shapes sound frequencies create. Now, we've talked about advanced technologies that star forts could have been using, but none of these technologies used electricity. If the people who built star forts were so advanced, then did they have electricity? Well, many say they did. The proof of this lies in the design of their architecture and the material they used. We talked a little bit about cathedrals and the conductive antenna they always have on the top of them. But how could these have created electricity? I'm no expert in this subject, but the theory goes that they work just like Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower. And they're essentially just stylized versions of this. The tower was designed as a large vertical structure, consisting of a cylindrical base and a domed top. At the center of the tower was a large coil of wire which was connected to a powerful oscillator capable of generating high-frequency electrical currents. Tesla's plan was to use the tower to transmit electrical energy wirelessly by sending electrical signals through the Earth's atmosphere. The tower was designed to generate extremely high voltages and frequencies, which Tesla believed would create resonant standing waves in the Earth's atmosphere, allowing energy to be transmitted wirelessly across great distances. This tower required no external power source and would work by tapping into the Earth's resonant frequency. Cathedrals and other ancient temples, and like we said before, pyramids as well, all the same components of the Tesla coil tower. They reach high into the atmosphere and gather energy from the earth itself, and they store the energy in the structures themselves. They say this is why old buildings were built with so many spires and used copper or metal roofs. Some researchers say they've also shown that certain materials like red bricks that have a high iron content, or rocks like granite with high quartz content can actually hold a charge. Many of these structures also incorporate water in them, like we see with holy water in cathedrals. And many temples have sacred fountains and pools. And all of these old star forts incorporate a cathedral in the center. Could they have really been a haven-like city with free energy and clean, pure water? The less extreme version of this theory is that they were not cultivating electrical energy, but spiritual energy. And we can actually see cultures that still do this in their temples today, like in the Far East Asia and Indian temples, for example. Their buildings often have these same components to them that the cathedrals and Tesla coils do, but they are simply using them to gather the etheric energy that they call chi in China, or prana in India, or mana in the Pacific, 
and many other cultures recognize this energy in their own way as well. The star forts and cathedrals were built in such a way they could have been created as a way to better reach God and possibly allow for some kind of communication, just like we see in ancient Israel on Temple Mount, which is also a star fort, and the Holy of Holies in the back of the temple, where the Ark of the Covenant sat. Our final theory on star forts brings us to the fringes of history. The Tartarian theory has many nuances and different versions, and it deserves a whole series on its own, which will definitely happen in the future, but for now, we're going to take a look at the Tartarian theory in relation to star forts. Now keep in mind a lot of this is just theory, so if you have any ideas or thoughts on it that you want to discuss, please put them in the comments, or come and talk to me on Patreon, I'll link that below. The theory goes that the Tartarians, or the Tartars, were a high civilization with technology that spanned all of mainland Asia, the Middle East, Europe, North Africa, and North America. And they originally came from the Atlanteans, after the Great Flood. But where exactly they began after Atlantis is debated. The Mind Unveiled channel has an interesting theory about them coming from Ireland, and after that migrating east to become the Phoenicians. It's also likely that they could have come to the Fertile Crescent and began the civilizations of Mesopotamia, the Canaanite Phoenicians, Egypt, and several others. Scholars aren't sure exactly where the Tartars originated from, but they usually say it's most likely they came from the Caucasus mountain region, or Turkey. These were essentially the Indo-Europeans. We see their language groups span across Asia and Europe, but where did they come from? Scholars debate this, but among YouTube theorists, which is where this theory comes from, they mostly agree that they originated with the Phoenicians. They point to several things. First is similarity in language, a coexistence in the same region of the Mediterranean at the same time period, as well as the countless times the region of Canaan has been taken over in the ancient world. There are many stories, including in the Bible, of the Israelites and the Phoenicians fleeing their original homeland. This is where the stories of the Lost Ten Tribes come from. We still don't definitively know where these Lost Ten Tribes went, but the Tartarian theory says some of them, especially the northern Phoenician city-states, traveled to the land of the Tartarians just north of them in Turkey, and became the nomadic tribes like the Scythians, and later Huns and Mongols. This would have made a lot of sense for them, as their ancestors originated as nomadic people. And the Phoenicians had good relationships with the people of these regions, as they engaged in trade. This is a similar occurrence we see later in history when the Romans take over the Phoenician city-states, and they flee to Carthage. We also find a lot of similarities between the Scythians and Phoenicians. For one, their reverence of the horse. The Phoenicians were expert horse breeders, and traded their horses all over. They also used the horse as a motif in much of their artwork, and even adorned their ships with the head of a horse. The Scythians revered the horse even more, as it was their primary method of transportation, and also used in much of their art and symbolism as well. The Scythians and the other Indo-European tribes spread eastward down into India, and westward into Europe. We trace this through their language, which spans almost all of Asia and Europe. Genghis Khan was trying to control the entire people of Tartary, including his European cousins. We can also find similarities across Asia and Europe in their technology. How they aligned their structures and built monuments. They were advanced civilizations with knowledge of celestial alignments, astrology, science, mathematics, geometry, advanced medicine, as well as architecture, and who knows what else. The theory goes that star forts were built by these earlier civilizations, or maybe they possibly go back to something even earlier. Do you know that the Otzi Iceman, as they call him, was a mummy that was found in the Alps who was dated to around 7,000 BC, and he had tattoos on his skin along his acupuncture points. This was a technology that was thought to have originated in China in the 3rd century BC. Well, it's clear that it originated much earlier among these Indo-Europeans, and eventually made its way to China, which was also part of this Tartary nation. At some point, a high civilization was established that could have spanned this whole region. We also find cities in Siberia on old maps, and regions that are completely barren now. Here's the Fra Marl map from 1450 depicting massive cities and great castles all across northern Asia and Siberia, and it speaks of Tartars in conjunction with the people throughout Asia and Russia. Some of these maps are said to be based off the travels of Marco Polo himself. The theory continues to say that the Tartarians eventually made it across the Bering Strait and into America. 
which, if they had cities in Siberia, would have been an easy task. And again, old maps show Tartarian-looking buildings and cities in America before anything was supposed to be there. Here's the Mercator map of the North Pole from the 16th century showing cities in northern Siberia and North America. Here's the Piri Reis map from 1513 showing castles already in America, as well as a boat in the North Atlantic traveling to America wearing hats or helmets that look similar to something we'd see in the Mongolia region. And we even see it in the DNA of Native Americans. Scientists have now concluded that Native Americans are descended from people in Mongolia and Siberia. These were the Tartars. Why do you think Columbus called them the Indians? He may as well just call them the Tartars because India was also labeled as Tartary on old maps, some of which may have been based off the ones Columbus was using. I've heard stories of many Native Americans not mind being referred to as Indians because they actually do originate from Asia. There was a great high civilization that was eventually lost in Siberia and North America, originally coming from the Indo-European Tartar tribes. The Catholics knew about this due to their Phoenician connections, and they covered it up by inhabiting the various star forts and wiping out everything they could find in America, destroying ruins, burying things, or building on top of them. Just take a look at the largest pyramid in the world. It's in Mexico, and it's buried still to this day, and there's a Catholic church built right on top of it. Star forts are located mostly in Europe, but also in other port cities around the world and in the Americas. Basically all across this land we refer to as Tartaria, and where the Phoenicians traveled. The theory states that these star forts were advanced technology, preceded only by the pyramids and megalithic structures of the ancient world, and Atlantis before that. These structures were built by advanced peoples and only later covered up and repurposed by the Romans and Holy Roman Catholics who also came from Hebrew and Phoenician origins. The Catholic Church was started by the Apostles of Jesus, who were of course Jews from Israel. The Apostle Peter is known as the first Pope, and he was from Galilee, a neighboring region in northern Israel to several Phoenician city-states. The Phoenicians and Jews had been intermarrying and sharing culture for centuries by this point, going all the way back to the time of Solomon. We know this from the Old Testament that the Phoenicians were originally descended from the Canaanites, that lived in their region before the migration of the Hebrews from Egypt. The Canaanites and the later Phoenicians were the pagans spoken about in the Bible, the worshippers of gods like Baal or Dagon. They would practice rituals like human sacrifice. And in the Bible, there's a common theme of the Israelites falling into these pagan ways and worshiping these gods. Many say this is eventually what also happened to the Catholic Romans, abandoning their true religion for power and greed causing them to cover up true history and lie on a grand scale to keep this power and keep the masses asleep. They knew the true purpose of star forts and other advanced technologies and didn't want it to interfere with their influence over the world. And they did this with other buildings, not just star forts. The Catholics would convert pagan temples into churches all across Rome. And they would place churches on top of sacred pagan sites all over the world. They were also burning every book that didn't align with them that they could. They were doing this all across Asia, Africa, and the Americas. One of the worst instances of this is the Mayan texts. Only a handful of Mayan codices have survived. I have a whole video on this if you want to check it out, it's called Lost Mayan Texts. We have no idea what could have been hiding in these indigenous histories. In North America we find what are essentially pyramids and ruins at sites like Cahokia, Spyro, Poverty Point, and thousands of others. And what do you know is often right next to these mounds? Star forts. Go ahead, go to your Google Maps and find where your local star fort is if you live in the US. And then search for cities named Mound, Mounds, Mounds Park, or something like that. You might be surprised. Especially if you live along the Mississippi River. So could it be possible that these star forts were later renditions of these energy collecting pyramids? The theory goes that the Tartarians also made it to America either after the sinking of Atlantis or sometime later from the Pacific side. And there are these same stories of civilization bringers throughout the Americas. I love the Aztec origin story. They claim the original place they and the other Mesoamerican people came from was an island on a massive lake called Aztlan. And I find it so similar phonetically to Atlantis. Anyway, the Roman Catholic churches who funded the colonization of America, 
They controlled most of the European royals and sent them on specific missions in America to cover up this history. Columbus knew he was going to the land of the Indians, or Tartars. Cortes knew he would be accepted as a god by the Aztecs. And Francisco de Orellana knew when he saw the people of the Amazon that they were related to the fierce Amazonian warriors told of in Greek legend, most commonly equated to the Scythians. Star forts, pyramids, and even Tartarian buildings were already here when they got here, and they speak of this in their writings. Orellana speaks of a massive civilization along the Amazon that we've only just recently uncovered with LiDAR scanning. The Mesoamericans built the largest pyramids in the world that were completely buried when archaeologists found them in the 18th and 19th centuries. And the great mound structures of North America were once huge pyramidal structures as well. Not to mention other stories from early European explorers, like that of the City of Gold and Pillars and Pearls, known as Norumbega in the Northeast, or the City of Gold El Dorado in South America. There's also stories of advanced people living in the west coast of North America. And again, we see these great cities that shouldn't be there on old maps. This theory has one more part to it. The mud flood theory, or cataclysm theory, or historical reset theory. Basically, this is the idea that cataclysms are more common in our past than we have been led to believe. And I'm not just talking about the Great Flood or the Flood of Atlantis, but all kinds of cataclysms. We find much evidence for this in old writings. Plato's Timaeus speaks of several past civilization resets, not just Atlantis. So does the Hopi creation story on the other side of the world. If you study the ancient structures, you'll find patterns that you just can't ignore. For one, almost every ancient site is buried under feet of dirt. Oftentimes, entire cities lay beneath the ground. Cities are also built on top of older ones that no one knows the origins of. And entire civilizations have been left forgotten until we find their buried ruins and artifacts. The star forts are more often than not buried as well, or at least half buried or left in complete ruin or forgotten altogether. This could be evidence that they go back to a time earlier than previously thought. There are many of these resets that are said to have happened. One of them being during the decline of the Roman Empire, bringing us into the Dark Ages. When this happened, the Roman Catholics used this as an opportunity to reset history and begin creating our new narrative. Every historical text that was written down at the time was done so by the hand of the clergy. Things can easily be forged and changed this way, and the Catholic Church has been known to attempt to delete texts and entire histories. Alright, we've talked about a lot here. There's some things I definitely want to go further in depth on in the future. I feel like we've only scratched the surface, but this is definitely a good starting point. If you have any thoughts you want to share, please give us a comment, and if you want to talk to me directly or have a discussion on these topics, you can reach me on my Patreon. I'll link that below. Thank you so much if you made it all the way to the end, and I'll see you next time.